Hi, welcome to RV Capital Talk. We're back with uh, Sherman Goldenberg, publisher of RV Business. And our guest today uh, for this segment is Don Clark, the president of Dutchman Manufacturing, a Thor company. And uh, we're here to talk about the market and also about the, and specifically the towables, which represents a, a huge segment of the, of the overall RV marketplace. Kind of in light of some of the predictions and forecasts that we're seeing uh, coming from Curtin that uh, maybe things are looking up to some degree at this point. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm mm -hmm. happy to be here. Um, business is good. Um, last year, as you know, was uh, two, 2010 was our, our reemergence gotcha. from, from the dark ages mm -hmm. and, and manufacturers that made it through the, the dealers that made it through the uh, recessionary times are I think smarter and stronger for it. Although when you ask people if they'd ever want to go through it again, you'd get a, a quick no. It's sort of like fraternity initiation. You know, you you wouldn't have missed it, but you don't really ever want to do it again. <laughs> you learn from yeah. it, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's the past and it That's can stay true. in the past. Well, I, I, two years ago, RVNN.TV didn't really even exist. And then last year, last fall, was our first uh, appearance at the RVIA show. And so we heard about the year before. Of course, we knew about it being here in in, uh, in northern Indiana, but uh, it, yeah, I mean, the, the attitude even then was more positive. It wasn't as bad. It was, you know, starting to look a little bit better. So this seems to be bearing that out. But uh, I think that it's fair to point out, in the case of Dutchman and some other total RV manufacturers, that they have, to a great extent, put all that behind them. Right. They are now on a on a growth curve, looking ahead. Uh, I don't hear as much uh, looking back. Mm -hmm. Oh no, um, Dutchman. And I don't want to be self-promoting, but Dutchman is a completely different company than it it was to the good side. Um, we're much more organized. Our brands are hitting on all uh, all eight cylinders, and and frankly, we took that opportunity to cut a lot of fat off of our company. So we're lean, we're mean. Our our brands are down to eleven brands, and and really, there's not a weak brand amongst them. And Dutchman isn't the only manufacturer that did that. When you look at the, the most recent uh, RVIA curtain forecast of a gain at wholesale of 7.4% for 2011, what are your thoughts on that? I, I, think it's, I think our industry is reaching an equilibrium. If, if you'll recall, last year, Sherm, the wholesale um, increases were just over 46%. That's not sustainable, and, and it certainly is understandable. Both lending institutions cut back money, and also dealers cut back because of the times they were going through on inventory. So after 2009, the dealers and the manufacturers that still had breath left realized, well look, hey, business is gonna go forward. We better bring in stock. We better restock our shelves, because if we don't, we're not gonna have anything to sell to generate income. The lending institutions, although they were, I think, tighter, obviously, on the money they lent out in the floor plan dollars, they realized, hey, these are, are good business people. We better loosen up the purse strings a little bit, allow them to bring inventory in, or they're not going to be around. So 2010, 46% increase, a lot of that, the majority of that was dealers, were dealers just restocking their shelves. When you look at the retail, um, retail sales in 2010, retail um, in all RVs were up just, just right around 7%. So clearly dealers were restocking their shelves. All in all, good news all the way around. Yeah. Um, wholesale shipments, um, Dr. Curtin's, um, I think stats were through March. If you go through April and wholesale shipments, our industry as a whole is up 6.2%, 5% on towables and, and almost 17% on motorized. That's healthy. Retail for, through that same period of time, we're up about 4.4%. So we've reached a leveling out phase, which is good because I don't see anything on the horizon that's going to indicate any, any, any drastic peaks or deep valleys. This is the type of business that you can plan for, and businesses can be more strategic and less reactionary. Dave, you and I were talking before about 
um, with Don about how the market has leveled off and in fact there's been some uh, a holding, a decreasing of work hours at some companies. Is mm -hmm. that true, Don? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of that is, and it depends on on if the company is a mature company in, in its dealer body and its sales, a, a growing company um, like Dutchman, again, not to be uh, um, self-promoting, but like Dutchman, we're, we consider ourselves a startup again. So we're growing, we're adding dealers, we're, we're, we're still you know, clipping along at a pretty good pace. But the industry as a whole, I think the manufacturers remember the sting of not being able to read the tea leaves right. and business coming to a screeching halt and almost going over the cliff. I think manufacturers are smarter for that and they're starting to reduce their production to hit the levels of the coming fall. What, uh, how does a company that's in, in towable, uh, well, the towable or, or any, any part of the market, but uh, your specialty uh, in the towables area, um, how does the product change to meet this kind of a market? Are there product changes, uh, adjustments? What, what are you doing differently on the, on the design and, uh, and actual product building side? Ah, great question. Um, you've got to make your product memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, kudos to really all the competition out mm -hmm. in the market, all the towables, and I, I can speak from a, to uh, a towable side. Not, I'm not an expert in, on the motorized. I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen as many good competitors out there in towables. There's right. a lot of great product out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So just to have a pretty face, a pretty decor, a pretty interior doesn't cut it anymore. Um, you know, we've, we've all been through times in this industry where hey, I can get you a unit tomorrow. Great, I'll take it, I need it. Those mm -hmm. days are gone. Right. Um, your product has to be, if you're gonna win in the marketplace, it's gotta, it's gotta truly have value, and it's gotta be not just value, it's gotta be memorable. When a, when a retail consumer, a couple goes through a RV show, they get, leave sometimes more confused than when they, sure. when, they, when, they, uh, when they enter. Those products that are memorable, great value but are memorable in that customer's eyes and are unique but not so you un not so far to the left that it doesn't appeal to the masses right but far enough where yeah, it's not just a me too product yeah. those products will win in this out of the box kind of innovation maybe not not real far out of the box but enough that it it, it grabs that interest and yeah. says hey that's a good idea that's yeah. a different kind of thing or of far to the right Right, <laughs> or too far to the right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. and of course, of course, the, a good dealer is the one who helps kind of clarify all that confusion too, as well. You know, that's that's an interesting thing that is happening, still happening in our in our industry. <laughs> Dealers are being more selective, mm -hmm. not just with the companies they do business with, right, but also the brands they do business with. Um, many of the many of our, our dealers have been burnt from manufacturers that didn't have the wherewithal to make it through the recessionary mm -hmm. uh, period. They got hurt because all that inventory sure. in their lot automatically gets devalued, and and they're the ones that sh share the burden on liquidating that inventory, right. and oftentimes that losses. Plus, it prohibits with the tightening floor plan from lending institutions. It prohibits that dealer from bringing in fresh product that actually does turn. That's so it's right. a double whammy. We're finding dealers that are partnering more with manufacturers and fewer manufacturers. Uh, they're going deeper with a, a particular manufacturer, but not really stocking the brochure. They're being very careful on the brands mm -hmm. that they stock. They have to be good turning brands and also the floor plans. Dealers are less likely today in this environment taking chances on those products that address maybe 2% of the market. Mm -hmm. They want to hit something that really, they want to bring in something that hits the masses. Okay. Well, you have one more thing? Um, real quickly, pricing. Has everything come down in, in price from three years ago? Um, you know, each in its respective category? Um, yes. Yes and no. Um, those manufacturers that are hitting volume, you've got different segments in this industry. The segments that are typically doing well are those price sensitive pieces in the individual segments. But that doesn't mean a, a high end fifth wheel doesn't sell. Right. But you've got to be very, very competitive in that segment. Right. Um, stick and 10 entry level products, 
very, very competitive. Not necessarily the price has come down, it just hasn't gone up. With the inflationary prices of materials mm -hmm. and parts, manufacturers have been forced uh, to take compressed margins just to compete in that, right. in that market. So, yeah, it's still we're still it's still a work in progress. This economy, in other words. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, this yeah. is. I think it, I've been in this business thirty years. It's a great industry to no be way. in, and I'm. I look young, but <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but yeah, thirty it's, years. All right. All right. It's a great. Whatever you say. Dan. It's All a right. great industry to be in. That's it. It is. Okay. Well, great. Well, thanks for these insights into the uh, towables market and the market in general during this economy. Don great. Clark, a uh, president of uh, Dutchman Manufacturing, and we will be right back after this here on RV Capital Talk.